Thank you very much, Dan. And so sorry to everyone who uh, took out uh, time from your very busy uh, uh, schedules uh, to join today's webinar. I truly appreciate your interest uh, in today's uh, topic. And apologies again for uh, the hiccups uh, on the part of the uh, uh, technology. Uh, this is something we're all getting, you know, to live with. So, uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. As you no doubt would have seen from uh, all the posts that has been made, uh, the uh, topic we're looking at today uh, is the sleeping giant. Why uh, Nigeria is the new emerging market for global uh, business. Uh, so, Aaron, can we please move on to the next slide? Thank you. Yes, so I'm sure a lot of you might be aware that in just uh, two days' time, Nigeria will be uh, heading uh, to uh, the general uh, elections. Now, this is a very, very unique uh, point uh, in Nigeria's you know, history uh, because for the first time in our recent political history, we have about three front runners uh, in the race for for uh, the seat of power, the Asarok of Villa, who uh, men that have been involved uh, in private and public, uh, you know, business. Uh, next slide, please, Aaron. So we uh, have as the three front runners in the uh, elections which we'll be holding on the uh, 23rd of February and then on the 11th of March for the governorship you know, elections, the three uh, main parties. Uh, the uh, All Progressive Congress Party uh, has its candidate who worked for many years in the private you know, sector, so he has private sector experience, he has the knowledge, and um, we have the candidate of the uh, People's Democratic Party who was for several decades uh, an official in the uh, Nigerian Customs Service and uh, rose to the second highest position uh, there uh, in that particular sector. And he has very rich uh, private uh, entrepreneurial uh, experience in different sectors, in maritime, in uh, energy, in, in logistics. Uh, and then the uh, candidate of the Labour Party uh, is a serial entrepreneur has chains of businesses in the fast moving goods sector, uh, is as heavily invested uh, in the uh, banking and financial you know, sector. And so it is just such an interesting time uh, in Nigeria's history. But either of these three men will likely emerge uh, as the next president after the elections on the 25th. And these men, uh, whoever emerges uh, as president, will be coming with very rich uh, private sector uh, experience, which will be uh, very good uh, for the uh, country and in terms of what we are looking at today. Next slide, please, Aaron. So, why is this election critical and why do global audiences and why do those of you who have taken time out to join uh, in the webinar, uh, know about uh, what is happening and why this election uh, will be the uh, awakening of the giant itself. Now, this election is critical for uh, several reasons. One, and some of you who have participated in my previous webinars uh, will know that this is a constant feature. Insecurity is a perennial problem uh, in Nigeria from the uh, northeast down to the southeast to the southwest, there are various bands of rampaging terrorists and bandits who are wreaking havoc uh, in different parts uh, of the country. Uh, the government has tried very much to try to uh, bring some form of sanity uh, into this particular uh, problem, but that has not really panned out, uh, at least not until very recently. Next slide, um, Aaron. So, just 
some days before the elections were held. Uh, Nigeria as a country is grappling with a very uh, severe uh, petrol or gasoline uh, scarcity. This has persisted for several uh, months, about uh, five months, but the one would have thought that with the elections just around the uh, corner, uh, there would have been some sort of stability or sanity uh, in the distribution uh, chain. But that has not you know, happened, and it's something very critical uh, for uh, the elections and the aftermath you know, of it uh, itself. Now, Nigeria has been and is still struggling uh, with a huge problem, and that problem is a petrol subsidy. A petrol subsidy uh, is a huge drain on the resources of the country. And um, the reason for this basically is that the Nigerian uh, refineries, we have four refineries in Kaduna, in Otakut, in Wari. These refineries are refining uh, not just even uh, a letter of uh, petrol. So it is that bad. And because of this uh, inability to refine locally, uh, huge amounts of money uh, are expended uh, on a yearly basis to uh, import uh, fuel uh, into the country. So all the ingredients which uh, has been uh, there for a number of years, they are now uh, coming together and is making uh, this election uh, uh, to the, the most critical uh, in the history uh, of uh, this country. Next slide, please, Aaron. Now, in the midst of what I'd mentioned uh, earlier in the previous slides, the problem of insecurity, the problem of uh, uh, petrol scarcity, uh, the attendant petrol subsidy, which has been you know, an issue. Uh, the Naira, the official currency uh, of Nigeria, has been scarce for a couple of weeks now. Um, citizens who uh, heeded the directive of the central bank that brought about a currency redesign of the higher denomination notes, I spoke about this in my last webinar uh, in October, are stranded because they have turned in their old notes, but have been unable to get uh, commensurate amounts of those new notes uh, from the banks because the banks say that they do not have enough you know, money. On top of this problem, which has seen a long queues of people, some people even camping out uh, in front of the ATM, uh, sleeping there overnight in the hope that they will be the first in line to be able to, to draw money out of the ATMs once they are, uh, money is uh, filled into uh, the systems. So that again is a crisis just on uh, the uh, EF itself of these uh, major uh, elections. Now, the Naira redesign, which is meant to be a very simple monetary you know, policy, has turned into something which has defied you know, all, all uh, expectations and, you know, um, explanation. It has become more or less a political issue because governors of the ruling party, what well, one would assume will be working together with the uh, president who is of their party, are the ones who are now uh, claiming that this whole Naira redesign thing, which has resulted in this Naira crisis, is a ploy by someone, some faceless individuals, to scuttle the elections itself. So this is the present uh, climate that we find ourselves uh, in Nigeria on the cops of having these very major elections. And one will want to ask, what prospects does these hold uh, for uh, businesses, will be investors who are looking to come uh, into Nigeria. Are these factors not uh, in a way uh, so discouraging that one would uh, want to look elsewhere instead of uh, coming uh, to Nigeria to invest? Now, this is why we're having this webinar. 
This is why we were talking about the awakening giant, the giant which is about to rise from its slumber, because despite this various unpleasant and somehow uh, uh, discomforting circumstances, there are quite a lot which prospective investors should take into uh, consideration regarding Nigeria. And that is what we'll be looking at uh, in some details in the subsequent slides. Aaron, please, next slide. Now, <clears throat> I have talked about the problems on the ground, and this is what this slide is about. It's a perfect storm, as some will say, of all the various factors that are combining together uh, to uh, supposedly uh, ensure, whether deliberately or inadvertently, that the elections uh, do not hold. But all these headwinds of various factors itself is just uh, what you might say uh, the perfect recipe uh, to look at the opportunities uh, that would avail uh, investors and businesses uh, post uh, the elections, uh, which will you know hold uh, in a few days' time and also uh, on the 11th of March. Next slide, please, Aaron, thank you. So, you know, you must always have at the back of your mind a reason why you want to think about investing in any climb or in any country uh, in the first instance. Now, Nigeria has tremendous green fields. Green fields, uh, not necessarily in terms of the fields being green, but green fields in terms of the opportunities which are bound uh, for investors uh, to be able to uh, consider Nigeria. Now, one significant thing that will definitely happen post the elections on the 20th of February and the 11th of March is that will be investors who will want to come to Nigeria will find out that the ingredients and all that they require to be able to uh, successfully uh, uh, carry out their particular uh, kind of business would already uh, be on the ground uh, waiting for them, so to speak. So one good reason for uh, you to think about Nigeria and the fact that uh, it is a slumbering giant which is about to awaken uh, with the sort of people that I have described who are the front runners and who no doubt uh, when any of them emerge as president who want to build a team around themselves uh, that will be able to drive the uh, economic renewal and regeneration of the country. So one factor that is of interest is that Nigeria is a land that is blessed with abundant resources. In whatever sector it is you want to think about, in the, in the mineral resources that it has, in agricultural produce, it, it is there in, uh, in abundance in terms of its textile industry, in terms of the banking and financing you know, the sector, in terms of human capital, Nigeria is a place where you can undertake whatever business you like, and you will find that the uh, particular circumstances uh, will be you know, such that um, would ensure that your business grows. And so Nigeria has political stability, which cannot be said for a number of countries within the, uh, the sub-region or even uh, in the sub-Saharan you know, continent. Yes, Nigeria has had this uh, challenge within security, but it's good to point you know, out at this uh, juncture uh, that in the last couple of weeks, with this Naira redesign, which uh, the uh, federal government implemented, we have strangely noticed that there has been a drastic reduction in the numbers of people that are attacked on the road, on trains, by terrorists and kidnappers who run a kidnap for ransom scheme. It has reduced drastically. So that is one thing that perhaps this Naira redesign, which was 
get initially are ensuring that the excess liquidity in the system, there was too much cash that was outside the banking system, and the government said we want to mop up those cash, we want to bring those cash uh, into uh, the banking system, and to also ensure that we're able to, to curtail the uh, flow of illicit funds, which goes to these terrorists and somehow they're able to then uh, launder and redistribute this money back into the system. So there has been strangely in that regards uh, some stability. We've not been hearing this because the individuals know that they cannot get any money, any cash for uh, their nefarious activities. So the political stability that Nigeria is enjoying at the moment uh, is one that uh, holds quite uh, a lot of uh, advantage uh, for potential investors uh, in the country. Next slide, please, Aaron. And so all over the place in Nigeria, uh, the government is putting very amazing incentives for uh, will-be uh, investors. And you can do a comparative analysis, our uh, uh, company tax rate is one of the uh, lowest in the world. Uh, we have pioneer status or incentives. Uh, our uh, withholding tax rate it's it's quite you know friendly. So the government has ensured that uh, for wilder investors in the country there is that uh, 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 provisions where you can enjoy um, not too high. Uh, uh, taxes uh, on your profits uh, from doing business uh, in Nigeria. And again, Nigeria operates a free market uh, economy, which is determined by the forces uh, of supply and you know demand. And there has been uh, tremendous uh, privatization uh, over a couple of years of some government-owned assets. And from the look of things, Whoever out of the three front runner that I mentioned earlier, who are vying for the top seat in the country, we know that there will still continue to be that focus on uh, private investment uh, in uh, the country because this either of these men who emerges will be coming with that experience which they have uh, gathered uh, over the years. Next slide, please, Aaron. And again, this perhaps is one of the factors which embeds itself to uh, any Wilbur investor uh, in Nigeria. It's uh, one of the fastest growing uh, economies, if not the fastest growing uh, economy in Africa and perhaps uh, in other parts of the world. The GDP uh, last year and the year before was quite um, impressive. And for those of you who uh, I followed the IMF uh, Global Outlook uh, for uh, 2023, uh, gave a projection for Nigeria. Uh, initially, it was 3.2%. Now that has been up to 3.5, you know, percent, which is, you know, quite um, quite good uh, compared to other uh, uh, countries. Next slide, please, Aaron. So I mentioned the, the banking uh, 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 sector quite strong, quite efficient. Uh, it is highly uh, driven by technology, and uh, there is, you know, uh, that assurance that uh, once you're able to come into the system, you have uh, that uh, confidence that you are uh, dealing with uh, banking institutions which are uh, uh, of a world-class uh, uh, status, with all the accompanying. A cutting edge technology. And Nigeria, again, it's you know, a very big uh, a telecoms you know, market. Um, some might say, oh, the market is saturated because you, you have the major players, but there is still room for uh, all the players who wants to come into certain niche areas uh, to, uh, to invest in and, and you know, do business. Uh, the uh, licensing round for the 5G um, uh, uh, is going on, and so there are all sorts of opportunities, you know, uh, there. In fact, we have uh, a minister of communication 
and digital economy, which shows you know that uh, the government's uh, uh, objective in that area is not just communications, uh, but all that goes you know with it uh, in this um, digital um, age that we're living in. Next slide, please, Aaron. And again, this is a very you know uh, good point for Nigeria. It has a large consumer uh, market, uh, and that is key for any investor who uh, is looking for where to uh, invest uh, 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 his money or, or start off a business. Uh, a population of over 200 million, about 213 you know million presently. 75% of that number are under you know 30, and there. Are and core cities where you are you are sure uh, that whatever it is you are, uh, are doing uh, if it is in the retail sector or uh, in the fast moving goods you know sector in the agricultural sector or in other sectors there is already a market base uh, which uh, it's quite um, a great incentive next slide Aaron so the times indeed are changing, and um, as I have been saying, Nigeria holds quite uh, 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 has a lot to offer to world be uh, investors, and the sectors are uh, are, are varied uh, depending uh, on your uh, appetite uh, for uh, investment, uh, you know itself. Next slide, Aaron. So. It is important to understand what is required in order to be able to do uh, business in Nigeria. And the very first thing, as uh, is the case with uh, other jurisdictions, is that you have to register uh, your company uh, with the uh, company's registry or the um, Corporate Affairs uh, Commission. Uh, it's very critical uh, for any foreign company coming to do um, business in Nigeria, you're required to register with a 10 million Naira um, capital, a share, you know, capital that would uh, almost be uh, in the region of about uh, $15,000 uh, in uh, today's uh, exchange uh, uh, rate. Next slide, please, Aaron. So, Apart from registering with the Corporate um, Affairs Commission or the company's registry, you have to register with the uh, Investment Promotion you know, Council uh, in order for you to be able to then apply for uh, the various uh, permits that you need uh, to procure your export rate quota for you to definitely uh, bring in uh, uh, experts from your jurisdiction who you might uh, want to drive uh, the business uh, in the first instance you will need to do all your tax registrations uh, and have all your tax you know uh, clearance uh, certificates uh, in order for you to be able uh, to uh, remit your uh, taxes uh, to the government and for uh, some other things that you will require to do next slide please Aaron so you, you need to have um, a business, you know, um, a permit uh, in order for you to be able to start your business. And the wonderful thing is that uh, because the uh, current government, as well as other governments, have uh, taken a proactive approach to ensuring uh, that businesses are able to run effectively and efficiently, a lot of all these processes that I have started you know, enumerating in the course of the deep dive, have become uh, uh, um, digitalized. You can do those things you know, electronically uh, without you know, having to spend so much time. So you have to get a business permit in order for you to obtain an expert rate you know, quarter. Now, depending on the industry you want to uh, invest in, if you're going to be investing in the oil and gas sector, you will before you obtain uh, an export rate uh, quota uh, from the um, Federal Ministry of Interior, you will first of all need to have uh, an approval from the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board. 
which um, oversees which oversees um, all the uh, businesses within the oil and gas sector. And then uh, the other thing follows uh, the SEPAC, which is like a resident of permit that allows you to do business uh, in the country. Next slide, please, Aaron. So clearly, uh, you will have to open the bank account uh, locally, and the opening of the bank account will, you know, allow you, enable you to import uh, capital uh, into uh, the country. Now, it's very important for you to uh, understand why um, you will need to have a certificate of capital importation after you've completed uh, all the uh, processes for registering the business. Uh, importing capital and obtaining the capital certificate uh, uh, importation will enable you, at the end of the day, to be able to repatriate your profits from your business uh, outside the country. And in repatriating your profits, you'll be able to do that uh, by exploring or utilizing the official uh, channel uh, of the uh, central bank uh, to uh, get your money out. And the process uh, is uh, seamless uh, to a very large extent. Next slide, please, Aaron. So these are very uh, rudimentary things that you do in the course uh, of the registration. Uh, auditors will be appointed. Uh, you need to have a company secretary and surely accept you uh, going to be running your business in a virtual you know, a form. You will need to have um, office uh, a space and that will entail a property acquisition. Next slide please, Aaron. Now, the beautiful thing, and I think I need to spend a, a few minutes uh, just running through uh, some of the key innovations that has uh, occurred in Nigeria as a result of the company's uh, An Island Matters Act, which was passed in 2020, just a little over two years ago. Now, this particular act has brought in uh, uh, this interesting innovation uh, in that a company can be set up and it can have just one shareholder, a single you know, director uh, a company. It has never been the case before because each company is expected to have uh, not less than uh, two shareholders and it must have not less than two directors, but that has changed you know, now. And so um, it, it's easier for those who want to set up companies that they are just uh, solely uh, in control of. There's been a redefinition of what small business means in order to allow for more companies uh, to take advantage of the small business uh, description. Next slide, please, Aaron. So, like I was saying before, in some other you know, uh, aspect, a lot has become uh, digitalized, uh, electronic innovations has been, you know, brought in, and quite a number of things uh, in relation to businesses are done uh, electronically, which uh, has saved quite um, a lot of time that will have been expended uh, in doing, you know, all the uh, things. There has also been some tremendous changes to the concept of, you know, a share capital, which um, used to be a quite a difficult uh, thing. Uh, for some uh, companies who are required to have a particular um, a share capital uh, before uh, they can uh, do certain things or apply for certain uh, uh, kinds of um, uh, jobs within certain sectors. So the ACT uh, CAMA 2020 has brought some uh, very helpful innovations uh, in that area. Next slide, please, Aaron. And again, so what we were not used to in this part of the world, the karma has brought it you know, about uh, having a limited liability uh, partnerships, which uh, used to be something more uh, common uh, in the Western you know, world and other parts of the world. We uh, now have that. 
there has been a tremendous reduction in the cost for registering security, uh, which again is um, a, a business friendly uh, uh, innovation uh, within the uh, company's act itself. Next slide, Aaron. So again, for uh, those who are keen uh, to considering this you know, uh, aspect, uh, the framework for implementing mergers has become uh, a lot more um, simplified and has become less stringent uh, than it used to be uh, on the, uh, the previous um, um, law itself, the company's law, uh, which has been repealed and the uh, Kamba 2020 uh, is what is in place. And again, uh, something which used to be quite um, uh, a very uh, pertinent and a burning uh, issue in discussions within corporate commercial circles, private company acquisitions, shares and assets, there has been uh, a, a revolutionary uh, 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 innovation uh, in that regard uh, in, in the current uh, uh, company's act itself. Uh, next slide, please, Aaron. So again, these points are very, are very critical points. Uh, financial assistance by companies is now lawful. It used to be legal uh, under the old you know, um, law. Uh, introduction of company rescue uh, processes, uh, that again is all part of the government uh, trying to ensure a business friendly uh, um, climate. Next slide please, Aaron. So, for the innovations which the Karma has introduced, which will be of interest uh, uh, to um, most investors, there's been an updated insolvency test for you know companies. Uh, the amount that the company uh, might be owed in debt to trigger uh, insolvency uh, uh, claims or actions has been increased, and so, so that again. Uh, is something quite helpful. There is this process of netting, which has also been introduced uh, into the uh, corporate commercial you know, um, world, which again uh, makes things quite um, uh, easy for uh, business uh, savvy investors who are coming into uh, the country. As increased transparency, that uh, is something which is key for uh, international uh, businessmen and women uh, and investors uh, to know that uh, the climate they're coming into uh, has very uh, uh, strong uh, rules and uh, procedures on transparency. Next slide, please, Aaron. So the share buyback thing, again, a very important uh, a part of our previous company's uh, act. There were very stringent uh, uh, restrictions on 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 that uh, that again has been uh, made a, a lot more uh, uh, manageable uh, in the current uh, companies. You know, art treasury shares also uh, used to be a very key concern for uh, uh, businesses before, and that has been uh, made uh, a lot more uh, comfortable or comfortable uh, for businesses. Next slide, Aaron. And so it continues. So I'll just um, mention those things. The, it's, it's there showing that uh, the government indeed is quite, um, you know, are keen to ensure that businesses are not unnecessarily uh, uh, restricted or stifled by setting uh, 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 prohibitions which are contained uh, in in the act itself. So trust over shares and companies register. Uh, no longer prohibited, it used to be prohibited uh, before. Uh, companies limited by guarantee, it used to be quite, you know, a stringent process to get that, you know, true. You have to go to the attorney general of the federation, who have to consent. But now, uh, to ensure that uh, the country uh, ranks with the 
uh, countries in, in the world that are uh, on the top of the ease of doing business uh, index, uh, all that has become uh, a lot more um, minimized in terms of the uh, procedures and uh, what you need to go through to ensure that governance of public companies and multiple directorships, removal of direct to um, and all that, again, very key considerations uh, within our corporate commercial uh, 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 space uh, in the last couple of years, uh, that has become a lot more um, sanitized and um, uh, businesses are then now able to uh, to operate knowing fully uh, what they are able to do in that regards and not do. Next slide, please, Aaron, and I suppose that should be the last slide on this particular uh, camera innovations. And so, uh, before uh, almost any infraction by uh, companies or individuals would uh, bring down the uh, sledgehammer uh, of the uh, uh, company's uh, registry on individuals, but now, whilst not condoning illegality or providing uh, uh, easy avenue for um, criminal minded individuals to to um, to 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 apply their trade and uh, um, the fraud uh, innocent members of the public um, fines and penalties are now reserved for uh, what we might refer to as the more egregious or serious uh, offences, which again helps to ensure that businesses are able to uh, to thrive. So this is the environment that uh, will be investors who are coming uh, into uh, in Nigeria, and with the events post elections, it is going to be quite an interesting um, climate for you to do business in. Next slide, Aaron. So again, everyone who uh, knows Nigeria knows what we are uh, quite um, popular uh, for, and that is our oil and gas uh, industry. It's the crown uh, jewel uh, of our uh, uh, country itself. So within the oil sector, we have three divisions. We have the upstream, we have the midstream, and we have the downstream. Now, the petroleum industry act, which was passed in, 19, in, in 2021, is the law that regulates the uh, industry. And this particular act itself has created two regulatory bodies. One, the uh, Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, or NUPRC, which takes care of upstream you know, matters, and the Nigerian uh, Midstream and Downstream uh, Petroleum Regulatory Authority, which takes care of matters within uh, the midstream and the downstream sectors. And I'm sure uh, those of you who are familiar with the industry will know that the upstream has to do uh, with matters relating to exploration and production and exploitation uh, of um, oil and gas resources. Uh, the midstream uh, deals with issues surrounding uh, logistics, transportation, and all the other things that are uh, related to the uh, uh, oil industry. And then the downstream, which deals with all those other aspects are uh, relating uh, to distribution of refined products, uh, um, petrol, kerosene, and all the other related uh, matters. Next slide, please, Aaron. So, as I mentioned previously, uh, this is just uh, uh, re-emphasizing what these are three sectors, you know, uh, uh, deal with. Next slide, please, Aaron. So, beyond registering. Uh, uh, in uh, a company, like we said at the very, uh, not too long ago, you have to register um, your company before you can venture into any uh, aspect of the uh, business world uh, in, the Ni in Nigeria. 
In the oil and gas industry, you also need to, after you've completed uh, all the registrations uh, with the company's registry, and you've obtained all the necessary licenses, you need to be registered with the NUP RC. You must obtain an oil and gas industry service permit in order for you to be able uh, to do any business at all. And there are three categories uh, of permits that are issued. There's a general, there's the major, and there is the uh, specialized uh, category. And one key point, and I mentioned that uh, in the course of speaking, you will have to be registered with the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board. The NCDMB uh, was created in 2010 as a result of the uh, passage of the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Development Act 2010. The NCDMB is the foremost body uh, that regulates local content in the oil and gas uh, industry in Nigeria, and it's a very important uh, aspect of the sector itself. Next slide, please, Aaron. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> surrounding the oil and gas industry, uh, which is the mainstay of the country, and which, you know, uh, post the elections on the 20th of February, two days' time, and post the governorship elections on the 11th of March, uh, in a couple of weeks, you know, time, the oil and gas sector is going to be very much in focus. I'm sure uh, some of you um, would, if you had joined in the previous webinars that we've had, where we looked, uh, uh, we looked uh, closely at the oil and gas industry. Now, the good thing about development in the oil and gas industry is that a lot of transparency uh, has been introduced, apart from the various bodies that are uh, regulating and ensuring that there is compliance uh, with um, laid down rules and regulations, the formerly state-owned corporation, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, has now transmuted or transformed to a private entity. So it's now the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, which uh, will then begin to do business like any other uh, company uh, which is in the country. I've talked about uh, in the previous slides about the two regulatory bodies which now exist uh, in uh, the sector. Next slide, please, Aaron. There's been quite a tremendous uh, a reduction in the uh, theft of oil, which again uh, I, I highlighted uh, in the last webinar, uh, which you know I did. There is you know uh, continued interest in fossil fuel exploration, despite uh, all that is happening globally. Uh, the COP27, which just uh, uh, ended in Egypt. Uh, there still is the ongoing uh, discussions, debate as to what should be done to uh, power countries in quote who still have large reserves of oil and gas uh, in the country, fossil fuel, and who uh, would want to have some sort of uh, compensation, climate compensation, uh, for them to transition uh, to uh, uh, the new, newer energy. Um, Areas. Next slide, please, Aaron. So, in this soon to awaken giant, this giant is already arising from its slumber. You want to ask what are the areas that I can possibly look to invest in? And they are numerous. You can invest in stocks, it's no doubt one of the major areas. Uh, uh, of investment in any climate at all, Nigeria uh, assures you uh, of rich dividends in this regard. You can invest in mutual funds for those who uh, have the appetite for these, you know, a variety of investments. Next slide, please, Aaron. Agricultural investment. That's, you know, again, it's one of the um, the best areas to invest in Nigeria 
uh, apart from the oil and gas sector in terms of uh, the yield, the revenue uh, that you and the profit you can make uh, from doing that. Real estate investment, a country of over 200 million people, you have quite a, a large number of that that are uh, middle class that were able to uh, afford uh, decent housing if th those are made available uh, in the country itself. Next slide, please, Aaron. Livestock, again, you look at the numbers and the fact of uh, the, the uh, consumer market that we mentioned uh, much earlier in the discussions. Mining and mineral resources, uh, Nigeria is tremendously blessed uh, in these particular regards. And so beyond the focus uh, on the number one uh, revenue earner of oil and gas, these other areas, coal, gold, columbite, iron ore, gypsum, copper, they are, they are uh, tremendous uh, money-making you know, opportunities for those who want to venture uh, into those areas. Next slide, please, Aaron. The education sector, you might wonder why that is there, but the education sector in Nigeria is one that is a real gold mine for those who want to invest. The young population, if you recall from one of the earlier slides, a population of over 200 million, and 75% of those are under 30. Uh, the public uh, uh, universities or even uh, secondary schools, they are overstretched. And any investor who looks to setting up uh, education um, institutions uh, will have a large and hungry ready uh, market you know, uh, to do so. For those who have a flavor for photography and videography services, uh, a lot of opportunities uh, abound also uh, within the country for that line of business. Next slide, please, Aaron. The manufacturing industry, very key, very key in Nigeria. Um, Nigeria is a country which, sadly, uh, to a large extent, uh, is an import-dependent uh, country, but all that is going to uh, change with this awakening, with all the uh, any one of the front runners who has a lot of um, private sector experience, entrepreneurial experience of you know investing. Uh, Emphasis is going to be on being able to manufacture some of those goods that are imported locally and that will be a minefield for anyone who wants to come in logistics is also key and it's tied to all the other things we've been you know um talking about and with the population uh with the road network uh with the infrastructure which in some areas needs to be uh uh developed not in some areas in a lot of areas uh opportunities abound uh for uh, investors uh, in the logistics uh, space. Next slide, please, Aaron. So, I should be rounded up uh, quickly. Uh, again, I say thank you for being able to uh, wait for me whilst trying to sort out the technology beat. So, investors who are coming into Nigeria be assured that the employment laws in Nigeria are not as stringent as in some countries that we are aware of. The Labour Act is the number one uh, instrument that regulates um, uh, employment uh, in Nigeria. But the interesting thing about the Labour Act is that it, it is restricted solely to what is described as workers, and workers are described in a way that um, makes those who fall into that category more of um, artisans, clerical workers, and the Lord. And so there is that uh, uh, room given to uh, people who are invested in the country and who have to employ people. Uh, your relationship with your employees will be dependent largely on their contracts of employment and on your employee, you know, uh, a handbook. But again, uh, 
those things are will be guided by uh, best you know uh, international practices based on what the international labor organization uh, have you know uh, agreed on or decided uh, in terms of uh, the various uh, conventions and so you have the trade unions act which uh, uh, helps to regulate uh, the the associations of um, of different workers in different sectors. Next slide, please, Aaron. Thank you very much. The Employee Compensation Act, which I, I know most of you are familiar with, the Industrial Training Act, which uh, strives to ensure that there uh, is the uh, regular training uh, of Nigerian workers. Next slide, please, Aaron. Uh, pensions, the trade unions, uh, as some of you know, this is uh, generating quite a lot of tension uh, in some parts of Europe. Uh, in the UK, there has been a series of crippling strikes uh, over uh, matters of pension and um, getting living wages. And so these matters are uh, also matters which uh, is addressed uh, in Nigeria itself. Sure, we're doing the home run now. Yes, next slide, please, Aaron. And so this is just an overview of our laws relating to um, businesses uh, in Nigeria. We've talked extensively about the Companies Act. The Companies Income Tax Act, I've said, uh, Nigeria has uh, one of the lowest uh, income tax rates, um, value added tax, withholding tax. Uh, I've talked about the Investment Promotion Council, the Labor Act, the Immigration Act, uh, Employee Compensation Act, banks and other financial institutions. So, next slide please, Aaron, I think that is the second to the last uh, slide. So the opportunities are quite rich. They're varied and they are uh, ones that will indeed ensure that those who come will indeed, uh, in the words of Richard Quest uh, of CNN, uh, they will have a profitable day from investing uh, in Nigeria. Thank you very much again for your patience and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, presenting this webinar to you. Thank you very much Fred. As always it's been a real pleasure to listen to you share your insights and, and expertise on, on a subject and this was no different. Um, Fred we have a little bit of time if you're happy to answer one question we had a really great question in from okay. Teresa, and I apologize, Teresa. Uh, I don't think we'll have time to answer that because it's quite an in-depth question, but what we will do is send that on to, to Fred, who will be in touch. So my apologies for that. But we had a question in from James. Um, if you can speak to Fred, what security changes has the government made in the maritime sector to ensure safety for shipping? Yes, thank you very much, uh, James, for uh, that question. Um, maritime is something which Nigeria takes quite seriously uh, because, as you know, Nigeria has been trying to be a maritime hub uh, in you know, Africa. Uh, so one particular measure that the government has put in place is that uh, we have uh, a number of uh, security personnel um, mostly from the naval uh, um, naval you know um, force that patrol nigerian uh, waters it's been very rare in very recent times uh, a couple of years ago we used to have a lot of incidents of um, piracies and um, you know a, a lot of uh, uh, vessels being attacked and all that but that has reduced drastically uh, because what the government has done beyond having the regular official um, um, naval force uh, that patrols the waters and uh, ensures that uh, vessels coming in are given you know protection there has also been a lot of private sector involvement in the uh, provision of uh, security we have an agency the nigerian maritime Administration and Security Agency in the Massa, which um, uh, since 2003, uh, that is almost 20 years, has had as one of its focal 
you know, um, activities, they're ensuring uh, that the Nigerian uh, waterways, the seas, are protected. And I can tell you from personal experience, uh, it is a very serious, uh, you know, um, matter which the uh, government has been attending to. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Fred. I can see we still have questions coming in, but I'm afraid that we will have to wrap up there for now. All of those questions will be sent on to Fred, who I am sure will be more than happy to be in touch to answer those questions. Once again, Fred, so thank you so much for sharing your expertise you today. Well. And thank you to our audience for being with us uh, today. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. But for now, I will wish you a good day. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Do enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you might be. Bye-bye.